r slash ask reddit. What's the worst thing someone tried to correct you about something you're specialized at? I'm majoring in archaeology. I had a guy start talking to me about dinosaurs. I correct him and say it's a fairly common misconception. But paleontology and archaeology are two different fields and I'm studying humans. Not dinosaurs. He doubles down and insists I need to know about dinosaurs because what do you do if you're digging up ruins and find a dinosaur fossil? Call a paleontologist? He smugly tells me I'll be useless in the field if I don't know about dinosaurs and I better start registering for paleontology courses and leaves. I still don't know about dinosaurs. So. Canadian lawyer here. I used to do primarily firearms law. I taught a course in firearms law at university. I've been consulted on it by lawyers. I've had judges tell other lawyers to phone me with firearms law questions. I had a law student telling me that I was oh so wrong about firearms law on a particular topic. Eventually they went and cited a particular case. Which I politely advised them they were wrong about. They keep going on. Talking about how just because I'm a lawyer and they're a student doesn't mean they're wrong. Meanwhile I'm just holding my tongue. Eventually someone else chimed in to be like. UHH. Don't you know who that is? And the case you cited was a case he personally argued and won on. Satisfying AF. I'm a Harley mechanic and I swear most Harley riders have to pretend they know everything about their bike. I don't even argue with them anymore. I just tell them what's up and if they want to debate about it. I say okay and walk away. Lol. You wouldn't believe the number of times people tried to tell me that people only become diabetic if they eat too much sugar and insist they are right. I'm a type 1 diabetic. Diagnosed at 14 months. Was I drinking soda from my bottles and using ring pops as pacifiers? Then? I'm a nurse and I particularly like it when people try to inform me about medications but I usually take paracetamol every hour and that's why you're here with liver problems Karen. I got shut down by this actually. I was arguing with my cousin while we were in an old hydraulic elevator. I said the hydraulic elevators are slow. Crap and have far more failures than cable elevators. The guy standing across from us laughs. Shakes his head and says he is an elevator repairman. And that's not true at all. Shamed. A guy that considered himself to be a music maven tried to correct me when I mentioned Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy. He insisted that J.S. Bach composed it when. In fact. Bach never composed any symphonies, not to mention that Ode to Joy is one of Beethoven's most famous pieces. I used to work as an outdoor guide on one of the Channel Islands off the coast of Southern California. But once. I was hiking with a pair of women in probably their late 40s or early 50s. They were asking me all sorts of questions about the natural history of the island, mostly simple stuff. But they had a lot of questions. Then one of them hit me with this gem. So. How often do you guys go out to feed the whales and dolphins? I was genuinely confused for a moment. What did she mean? I asked her. Well. You have to make sure all those whales get to eat. When do you go feed them? It must be expensive to have enough food for them all. This woman thought that every day. Our boat captains would drive around the channel. Tossing fish to dolphins and whales until they were all fed. I have no idea where she got this. Considering she'd come over on that very boat. It took me a little while to politely convince her otherwise. I'm a food scientist. So this happens basically all the goddamn time. One person insisting that MSG gives her terrible migraines. She was eating pizza at that exact time. Someone insisting that you should drink apple cider vinegar to alkalize your body to prevent diseases. I point out that's an acid. He insists it's not. Apple. Cider. Vinegar. Another person telling me how a gavy nectar is so much healthier and how I should replace all the sugar I eat with it. I tell her it's just a fructose glucose mix and you might as well use corn syrup. She got really mad. Like irrationally mad. There is so much misinformation about food. That this is basically constant for me. My height. I'm 6 feet 10. Guy comes up and says he's 6 feet 10 so I must be like 7. Nah. Man, you're 6 feet 6 maximum. And then we went back and forth about that for a bit. 
Also had the other side of that coin where someone will ask how tall I am and I'll reply 6 minutes and 10 seconds and they just straight up won't believe me and will tell me I'm lying. Like, what? Why? What would I possibly stand to benefit? I studied history at uni and worked for a while as a tour guide in Prague, Czech Republic. I had a customer once on a walking tour of the city go really snarky with me because I called the river running through the city the Vltava. He declared to the whole tour that that wasn't its name. I asked him if he'd heard it referred to as the Moldau, as that was the German name for the river during the Habsburg era when German was the official language. But he said no. And was I stupid? The river was called the Danube. I pointed out to him that the Danube doesn't run through Prague. And asked if maybe he was thinking of Brno? No. He had definitely read in a guidebook that it was the Danube and why the hell was he paying money for this tour if the guide didn't even know what the river was called? At which point another tourist in the group showed him her guidebook where it clearly said Vltava. Then another showed him a map. And another showed him another guidebook. And so on. Until the whole group had basically showed him what a twaza he was being. He didn't apologize. Of course. But at least he shut up for the rest of the tour. Asked to do the rear brakes on a classic Vespa. I think it may have been a 200 rally. Not sure. It was decades ago. So the owner and his pal turn up with the scooter I loosen off and remove the rear rim and tire. Loosen the hub nut and go to put the rear rim and tire back on. Oh hey. Wait a minute mate. What the f are you doing? I'm getting the hub off. Not like that you're not. So I tell them I'm going for a cuppa and a smoke and I'll be back when they've removed the hub. 4 hours. 4 bloody hours they were at it. Hub wouldn't budge. Not 1 millimeter. Getting bored I go back to them. Put the rim and tire on. Screw in and tighten 2 wheel bolts and using a mallet hit 3 times in 1 point. Then 3 times 180 degrees opposite. Rinse and repeat 3 or 4 times. Whole rim tire hub assembly lifts off. I charge them one stroke to a day labor for a 30 minute job. When a man tried to correct me on the anatomy of the vulva vagina uterus when a, I am a woman, was born a woman, and have always had female genitalia and b, I am a midwife and not only was biology part of my degree but I have a vagina at eyesight at least twice a day. The only thing that shut him up was me saying I've been inside way more vaginas than he has. He took it very personally. Despite that being my literal job. My friend and I went to Dapper Day at Disney last weekend. Where people dress up in vintage wear. One of Disney's photographers asked my friend if she was Disney bounding, interpreting a Disney character, and she replied that she was simply a generic dress circa 1955. The photographer began telling us how she was really much more late 1940s. And that we may have researched it. But he lived through it. And next time we should look at a picture. We are both professional theatrical costumers whose strengths lie in historical costuming and her dress was taken directly from a 1955 catalogue. Further. Based on his approximate age. And being generous that he may have aged well. This man was definitely not older than 5 in 1955. I worked in a jewelry store. Specialized in vintage. And this 50 plus yo man with a much younger woman dangling from his arm asked me to pull out a few pieces. Shushed me Shen I tried to present the products and went on a pompous rant about it you see. Darling. In the middle ages doctors would grind precious stones. Like emeralds. To dust. And make its drink to their patients as a remedy. They called it ambrosia he turned to me. Grinning. And added but I bet you didn't know that. I just said. In the meekest voice possible I'm sorry sir. I think you mean a lecture. Ambrosia was the drink of the divinities in Grecian mythology. His mouth just dangled open for a couple seconds before snapping audibly shut. And he barked and how does someone like you could know that? I don't know if it was the utter powerlessness on his face or my very serious eager to please the customer face. But his girlfriend just started to gleefully laugh at him. And he just turned his heels and power walked out of the shop. Guess I lost a sale but hey. He did ask me. I didn't specialize on it but when I worked at the deli in my local grocery store I had a guy come in asking for some sliced ham. I asked him if he wanted black forest ham. Honey baked or mesquite ham. He looked at me and said it's not mesquite. It's mystique. 
I pointed at the sign and label, on the actual effing ham. That said mesquite ham but he still corrected me. I gave up and gave him his damn mystique ham. This was a good 15 years ago and I'm still mad about it. Got a ton of these when I worked at a video game store. My favorite was a guy who came in around the time Skyrim came out and asked if we had the new Elder Scrolls game. I said oh. You mean Skyrim? He laughed condescendingly and said no. I mean Scrim. Thinking he was just mistaken. I was like oh no. It's called Skyrim. No it's not. It's pronounced Scrim. At that point I realized he didn't even want the game. He just wanted to show up the girl working in the game store with his superior knowledge. Also had someone come in demanding the Mario game on PS1. When I said no such thing existed. He immediately went ballistic. Screaming that it does exist and he played it at his friend's house. He eventually stormed out of the store yelling about how stupid I was. Guessing he'd had that interaction at a few other game stores a day. I studied geology for some time and I was telling someone about how the area we live in is mostly limestone cause it used to be sediment that was on the ocean surface and they said that place we live is above ground now it could have never been below sea level. Geoscience classes must not be doing too well. Someone in my school, USA, tried to correct my Spanish, I'm Puerto Rican a Spanish speaking colony of the US, and then I started talking full Spanish and he walked away. Not me. But yesterday I was at a physics lecture given by Donna Strickland, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics last year for her work in lasers. During the questions afterward some kid, either undergrad or young grad, I didn't know him, was all I have a comment more than a question, and proceeded to explain some laser technique to her and that she should use it. Her response was a yes. We are well familiar with X in my lab and use it. I was just kind of amazed at the moxie of a kid who tried to tell a Nobel laureate how to do her research in a room packed with hundreds of people. Edit. In the spirit of the thread. I do enjoy all the people explaining to me how academia works or stuff about women in science. Seeing as I am a woman submitting her PhD within a month. I have kept fish for over 10 years. I worked at a fish store in high school. Bred fish for profit and currently work at a lab which keeps fish and other aquatic animals for scientific and biotechnology related research. I've had countless people argue with me about basic fish care both on reddit and in real life. Telling me that what I'm saying is false or that a certain fish doesn't need the space it needs. Or telling me a cycle is unnecessary. Everything. I am a creative director. Clients always think they have better ideas and then waste my time and my team's time implementing their changes only to go back to what I originally suggested. But hey, whatever they pay for it and I get paid so I guess it works out for me. But it is annoying. I work with refractory, melting furnaces, and metal for a living and work all across the world doing it. You can find a lot of information about any of those things by doing a simple Google search. Processes and specifics may require an in-depth search. And some you may not find at all due to a prototype method being used or a company secret. But tell me how the hell you're going to argue with me about something as trivial as the melting point of aluminum? I don't even need to be an expert in my field of work or even the same damn ballpark because it requires a maximum of 4 seconds to google it. That moment when after 20 minutes of arguing about something, the person googles it to prove you're wrong. That look on their face. The shame when they see you were right all along. Priceless. A complete ball bag tried to tell me that autism meant I have no empathy at all. And that it requires extensive therapy to correct. And that he didn't believe I'm autistic because I'm hyperlexic, opposite of dyslexia, and I can speak. I have lived with autism all my life. It took decades to train myself to make eye contact. I have a lot of empathy for people. I just have difficulty understanding emotions in others when the emotion isn't logical. Also, therapy sometimes helps with autism. But not always. For a short time I was teaching in a school and at the end of the year an inspector visited to go over the way I had corrected the final exams. He insisted that the answer to a particular question was not the one I said was correct. He was the one who had written the question. I argued with him that I was very sure that I knew what I was saying. I had written a thesis about this particular topic. It took a lot of effort not to punch him in the face. 
I'm a climber. People tell me to wear gloves all of the time. There is a form of climbing where gloves would be somewhat acceptable, although even then a bit questionable, but in free climbing bouldering you cannot wear gloves because your fingers actually allow you to grip onto smaller pieces of rock. I had to leave our welding for this reason. I'm a welder on nuclear submarines with over 14 different x-ray welding qualifications at this company alone. I would constantly get into arguments with people who are new and have no real world experience with welding. The amount of wrong information being thrown out left and right over there is insane. There are plenty of very knowledgeable folks there. But they are overshadowed by the ignorant. I'm an identical twin and a big biology nerd. I had someone insist that fraternal twins are paternal twins and explain why she'll have some BC they've leapfrogged through her husband's family. Edit, I love the convos this reply started. I'll use the platform to say that I once specifically asked my genetics professor in college if a woman can inherit a twinning gene through her father. He said yes. He believed so. It blew my mind. Of course it does not affect the man's ability to have twins. But it can potentially affect future female offspring. My art teacher in school took the yellow paint from me and drew a massive sun in the corner of my picture. I was 5. And I was already fucking brilliant at drawing suns. The cow. Trying to play MTG in college was a lesson in frustration. People would try to create their own rules. Give cards abilities they didn't have. Ruled that if you countered their card that they still get the enter the battlefield ability. Act. And when called out for being wrong. Well that is how I play. Not to sound like a gatekeeper but you aren't playing magic at that point. You are playing I win cause I say I do. Then the people that would blatantly cheat. I'm an ornithologist and have handled literally thousands of baby birds. Someone in the neighborhood was asking on our neighborhood Facebook group what to do if a baby fell out of its nest. I told her to put it back. A guy hops on, no idea who I was, and went off about how the mom would never return if you touch the baby and that she should just try to raise the baby, not easy if you don't know what you are doing and don't have the supplies. I informed him it was an old wives tale. Of course the mom would come back. That fired him up and he went on about how I was an idiot and didn't know anything and I should just shut up. I informed him of my job and added a picture taken that day of me holding four nestlings. I added in an article about me for good measure. He decided to double down and continued to tell me I was clueless and he knew for a fact it was true and people should believe him because he was right and I should change professions because I clearly didn't know what I was talking about. Ugh. I have worked in a tire garage for nearly 10 years and I'm female. I can't even count how many times people try to tell me how to do my job. No. You can't cross rotate my tires. You will break a belt. The tires will explode. Comma sir. We haven't sold bias ply tires in over 10 years. We only sell radial tires and the way I'm rotating them is specific to the drive axle of your vehicle. Or my personal favorite. Sitting there is a customer lays into me for 30 minutes about how we sold them magnetic tires I never had a nail in my tires until I bought your tires I've had 3 repairs since I bought tires from you guys. This is a stunt to make money off of me. If only I knew how to make rubber magnetic. I'd be so rich doing all my free repairs. I have a ton of family members and friends that speak English. But none of them are as proficient as I am. I've studied it for years. I've taken exams to become a certified translator whereas they've studied it briefly in high school and kept up with movies or music. I'm still really proud of them and always encourage them in their learning. 99% of the time they'll compare themselves to me. When the topic comes up. And they'll always say how much better I am at it. But then they'll ask me the difference between certain phrases or they'll ask me which word or phrase is correct and for some stupid reason they suddenly don't believe me. I can see it in their faces all the time. They frown a little. Hum. Then say okay and then move on. A couple of times I've seen them post their mistakes on Facebook and Instagram. It's not horrible. It's just annoying as all heck. Actually. It's been proven that vaccines can cause autism. Bro. I have a PhD and work in an autism research lab. My wife has a friend who studied zoology who once told me that cows can't run or jump. I grew up with them. I, more than once, had to run after or away from them after they had jumped a fence. Cows are fucking fast when they want to be. 
people without their ID constantly try and quote various laws about being able to order alcohol when out with parents. I work in a pub which is part of a chain. We're regularly tested for challenge 21. No I'm not handing you a pint when you can't prove you're old enough and wouldn't be willing to pay the £1,000 fine I'd receive. Oh boy. Where do I begin? I'm a professional music producer. I've been for years. My productions get great reviews from people and are often singled out by music magazines and other industry professionals. People who know what they're doing are nothing but nice and supportive. But I get shit from salty bedroom guitarists all the fucking time. Seems like every time I produce a young band. There's this one guy there who thinks he knows it all because he watched a YouTube video. The bass knob on the amp should be set at 10. Because 5 years ago I heard that Tremonti sets his bass knob at 10. There should be no effects or editing on the vocals. Because Black Sabbath in the 70s didn't have vocal effects. Double tracking guitars? What the fuck? Nirvana had one guitar player and they were the biggest band on the planet. We're recording only one take. I'm not really specialized. But a redditor tried correcting me about the geography of my country, Norway. Claiming that it was very much flat like all the other Nordic countries. And he refused to believe me when I told him that it's the opposite and it's filled with mountains. I'm a professional videographer and anytime I bring it up some people say my profession is on its deathbed and that anyone with a cell phone can do what I'm doing. That's totally wrong. I also once had someone try to explain local politics to me. I'm an elected official in my hometown so it was fun to hear them be mostly wrong about everything. My parents are Italian. I speak Italian. And I've had people in the US. Who are one stroke for Italian at best. Or who once ate Italian food. Correct me on the pronunciation of any number of things. Yeah. I've forgotten how to say a lot of things. So maybe I'm not a specialist per se. But sauce isn't called gravy in Italy. Sorry. I'm a type 1 diabetic. My pancreas doesn't produce insulin. It never will. If I don't give myself insulin I'll die. Those are all facts. They will never change in my lifetime. The number of people who talk to me about weaning myself off insulin. Or how I just need to change what I eat to fix it makes me want to punch them. It's been about 13 years since I last produced any insulin on my own. I know what I'm talking about. I don't care if you brother's ex-girlfriend's aunt cured her diabetic cat with cinnamon. Leave me alone and let me stab myself in peace over here. And don't even get me started on the people who nag me about aspartame. Yes I know it's probably not awesome for me. But you know what's worse? The fracking one quarter cup of sugar in regular pop. Now I'm grumpy again. Bulls. I am an art student who focuses on photography. And I have been for about 4 years, 3 years in high school, 1 year in college. Every time I talk with my mom about an idea I have for a shoot or something I'm trying to figure out on my DSLR to make my photos turn out better. My mom always tell me try setting your camera to auto. If I was a tourist with a point and shoot style camera who didn't how to use a camera, I would use auto. If I am photographing the night sky and trying to make a photograph of the stars and or the moon, I am not going to set my camera to auto. Whenever my relatives who didn't go to college try to give me advice about what to go into or how easy it is. I'm sorry but I'm already a junior and understand my market more than you do so please don't try to tell me some preconceived notion. Aunt Becky. Edit. I'm a junior in college. Not high school.